On this episode, Christian does a lot of copy and paste. Bam! Wemelan. Ding dong. Our bad decisions catch up with us. This is me sowing, now this is me reaping, like, oh no. <laughs> but also a shocking disclosure. Aliens are... Ah. Hi, I'm Christian, this is Lazy Devs Academy. And we are today working still on our advanced schmuck tutorial. And today is going to be a very special episode. An episode that I am dreading a little bit. Uh, one of the promises, core promises of this channel, of those tutorials on this channel, is that we don't do the and then draw the rest of the owl kind of stuff. We show every step of the way. But this is gonna be a little bit of a and then draw the rest of the owl episode because due to the nature of the stuff, of the content, of the type of work we're gonna talk about today. We kind of had another one of those episodes in the very first episode when I'm showing you mockups, right? I didn't show you how I made the mockups. I just walk you through the decision process of how I created the mockups. And that, and you know, there's like a good reason for whenever you're drawing something or whenever you do like map design or something like this. These are not activities that I can like show you off in this tutorial. It doesn't really work that, that well. I could potentially record like a, you know, recording of me drawing stuff, of doing pixel art. But I don't think that would give you an idea of why I do those things. You will just see me drawing nice pixel art. Wow, amazing. <laughs> you can already go out on YouTube and, you know, Google, you know, speed art, speed drawing of people doing amazing artwork. And then you watch it and it's like, okay, they can do that. I cannot do that. <laughs> so it's like, I don't, I'm not even learning that much. I mean, you do learn watching other people, don't, don't get me wrong. But it's like, it doesn't really tell you how to go about drawing things. So instead of um, me recording doing art, instead of me recording doing, uh, you know, making the map, I want to step you through the process, explain exactly what my thought process is creating those things, and hopefully that will allow you, that will help you through going through this process yourself. And of course there's uh, this little problem that, you know, I did that long time ago and I already invested all that work, I didn't record it back then, so I, I cannot really even show you this, I, doing it again, like pretending like if, 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 as if I'm drawing all this stuff from scratch is, is also not good, and then drawing stuff from scratch is also not good. Like, there's just like, I'm, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. So please bear with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to convey the, the way, best way possible, you know, what the next step is, is, and it is kind of like a challenging step. Let us start with where we're going, and then let, let me just step with you through how we're going. But even like importing all of the results into our current software is going to be even challenging by itself. Let me show you real quick. Okay, so we have, this is our program, and we're gonna load, oops, load, uh, what was the name of the load? Scroll to, you remember this? You remember this? This was our beautiful program, we love it, we love it so much. We can even repeat, image row pieces, cool, 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 cool. Um, this is the tile set, and this is the map. Now, I have a different program here. This was the thing I created back in the way back, way back, that has uh, a different map, you will see. This is the map of our game. This is gonna be the level of our game. You see there's cows, there's cars, there's trees. We're gonna talk about all those things, don't get me wrong. But first I'm gonna uh, show you where we're going, where we're going. Okay, this is a beautiful map. And here is the sprite sheet. Here's like in the, in the final tab, I have the sprite sheet. This is, these are all the tiles that we use to create this map and also these tiles. A total of one, two, three, four, five, six lines, six lines of tiles from our tile map dedicated to recreate this beautiful landscape. Now, before we step you through the process of how, you, how to get there in the first place, I want to copy these things over into my program. And that's probably that's something that if you want to recreate for the version of the game that where you recreate exactly what I'm doing, uh, that's something you will have to do as well. And there's some problems here and I wanna talk about those problems, some technical problems. First of all, when it comes to the sprite sheet, it's a problem. 
you just press shift and you can select all this stuff. You can go copy. And then here, we're gonna go in the last tab. I'm gonna paste here, I'm gonna go paste. Oh, 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 okay, we have to go to the sprite editor. <laughs> we have to go to the sprite editor. Okay, so we do this again, we select this. We're gonna copy and paste, bam. Wemelan, ding dong, good. Now let us let us copy let us copy this little strip as well, and we kind of also want to copy these. These are kind of like just debugging purposes, but we're going to copy them anyway. So copy. I'm going to select here. Bam. Okay. So now we have carried over. We have carried over all of the <coughs> all of the tiles. That's good. But now we also want to copy the over the map, and this is where we get into some troubles. You would think that maybe you can just like select, uh, this is a single segment. I'm gonna copy and then like what? Paste? No, that doesn't work. Do I paste like this? Like, it just doesn't work. You cannot copy maps. I'm gonna show you a way of doing this manually, how I would then carry it. Because you know, I mean, I could sit down and just like recreate the map by hand, but that just would take too long. So how do we get the map from one file to another? And the way we do this is, uh, let me first save this, and then let's let's type in folder, and that will open up, pop up this uh, this window that shows you the files in your in your Pico 8 folder. Uh, here is scroll two, and you can open this with uh, there we go, Notepad, um, just once. There we go. This is what our Pico 8 file looks in a notepad. And then also I'm gonna open up the other file that contains the, um, the map. I'm gonna open that in notepad as well. Right, so these are those two files side by side. So this is the um, this is our little scroll to prototype. And this is uh, you know our donor. This is the receiver, this is the donor. And you can see it's just like when you open those Pico 8 files in a text editor, you can just see. You can just see the code. That's nice. You can just look through the code. There's a little bit of a gunk on, on, on the top here, but otherwise it's just like the plain text code. That's cool. That means you can use an external text editor and some of, them, some of people are using this and it's fine. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. And, but if you continue scrolling down, you get some stuff. This is GFX. These are the graphics of the um, that the, your sprite sheet basically. It's just like there, and the individual numbers are uh, different colors, different different pixels. And then if you continue scrolling, you get other stuff as well. Uh, let me see. This is the map. There we go. This is the map. This all this code is map, and you can see it's always the same numbers because our map is quite repetitive. And uh, in this map segment. With this map segment, I want to just like do, this is where I want to do the transplant. This is where I want to transplant the map from one, one, one game to another. So I'm just going to take this here. I'm just going to start copying this one, this map segment. It stops here at SFX. I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to paste it in here. Overwriting what was there already. Paste. Uh, it, did, uh, there did a, it did a line break and I removed the line break just to make sure it, because this can break very easily. This is kind of fragile. I'm going to save this. I'm going to load scroll two. Uh, no, not, not scroll, scroll two. And there it is. It worked. It worked, guys. Oops. It worked. We have our map carried over from one program to another. Isn't that just beautiful? It not that just beautiful? Now there's something that is wrong still and that is the actual level is not being carried over. That's something that we still have to carry over. Um, but let's talk about it later on. Now let's move over to this, the part where I will walk you through the process of how I came up with this map and how I came up with this sprite sheet. Now, first of all, let us let's talk about the starting point where we're starting with the sprite sheet. Remember, this is the mock-up. 
This is the little image that we created in the first episode and you maybe create a different one, but this was mine. And so uh, my initial start was, okay, I now have to create this background here. This background was in, in itself also a mock-up, not created by myself, but again, by a Skies of Chaos, which is, um, I don't know, I forgot the company. The game is called Sky of Ch Skies of Chaos. Uh, a company made a shmup called Skies of Chaos and they made like a mock-up uh, of their game, how it would look like if it was in Pico 8 and just kind of like to just stole the background, uh, which um, I was like, yeah, you know, this is me sowing. Now this is me reaping like, oh no, <laughs> I haven't created this background and I haven't, uh, and I now have to replicate this background. I have to create now a sprite sheet that can show this background, can show an image like this in Pico 8. So I kind of have to reverse engineer this background a little bit. Uh, we see kind of like a, a lots of water and we see those very tall cliffs with you know trees and, and houses in there and then we have uh, we have like those um, the cliffs on the bottom are always surrounded by those waves that's kind of nice and now we have to come up with a sprite sheet that replicates this look and I basically I just went like I just started out with a map with a with code that looks very similar to what we had in the last episode with scroll two. I just like, like very similar code and I just started drawing some sprites, uh, drawing some tiles that, and then building the level out of it. That was just like initial. I knew that, you know, I knew that I needed some water. So I made a water tile and I knew I wanted to have those cliffs. So I made like these kind of like, uh, I think the, I'm not sure what the name of that is, nine tile, I think is the thing. Where it's like you, you, you just draw a tiny little square on your tile map and then you can sample the corners or a straight line from the little square to build uh, any type of square, any, any size of square uh, in, on, on the world. And so we can build like tiny little squares here or, or the bigger squares or like something like a landscape like this. Now with a landscape like this, you quite often realize that you also have to have, have inner corners. So I created like inner corners for this so we can have like more interesting cliffs. Um, and then also in each tile, um, I added like these kind of like waves around. And this, these waves are kind of like causing troubles already. Already that was one of the things, first things that I realized. And that is, um, you, you see how, for example, this, this is a straight tile. This is just like the straight uh, coastal tile, but this one has the wave going into it because you know we just make create like little block and the waves are going around the block. But you, you sometimes want to have a coastal tile where the wave just where the, where, the, where the waves continue. So now you have like two different tiles for for the coastal tile. You know you, you cannot just draw a coast like this because you always get the wave going behind the coast. So that looks bad. So now you have to have like a special coastal tile and then every now and then you have a coastal tile where the wave goes behind it. You know, it's like this, you have to have, you have to manage those waves because the waves are tied to do your tiles. So that was kind of inconvenient and that made this tile map explode. This is kind of like half of my tile map. I thought initially that I'm going to just have one tab. And this was my initial budget. Just one tab full of tiles for the background. And I kind of like burned through the budget just to draw, just to be able to draw coastal cliffs and they're not really even that great. Um, so I was getting nervous and I was like, I don't know, I think I need a slightly different approach here. Okay, so I continued working and this is like the, my second version, my V2. Uh, and um, I use a slightly different approach here. So I still have my nine tile to build my, my cliffs, my coastal tiles. But you can see that now they go all the way to the edge, right? All the way to the edge, right? So if I have a corner tile, it goes all the way to the edge. Um, so there is no room for the waves. The waves are on their own cost, uh, on their own tiles. We add the waves as an extra tile next to it. We draw the, the waves are separated from the from the coastal tiles, and that allows us to have a much more compact solution for for those coasts. Now the waves look a bit janky here, they, they're uh, uh, yellow and, and red. And that is because I tried a technique um, to animate the waves to make like the, um, the, uh, 
the background be animated. I'm using just basically I'm doing a, a palette switch trick to turn uh, to turn red alternatively to turn red and yellow into white, so it looks like like the waves are animated. Uh, that also means that I cannot use uh, yellow or red in anywhere else in the map. I kind of like I just I just can't get don't get to use those colors anymore, which is fine. Um, so this is what it looks like. So you can see there's some animation happening, and, and this is nice. This is a nice landscape. I can, I can shoot a little bit. This is cool and good. Uh, you can see that my ship has a, a blue outline. That's something that's actually part of the initial mock-up. Um, but I definitely notice it here that you absolutely need, need it. Like if you're going over blue, it's fine. But if you're going over the, the green and there's like a lot of noise happening here, you realize that you really need that, um, that separation, that, that outline really helps the ship pop out a little bit. Uh, one, also, one thing you can also see is that the cows, we have some cows here, and I don't like the cows. <laughs> the cows are horrible. I try to make them cute and everything because everything else looks a little bit cute and, and so forth. But um, yeah, those cows are, are atrocious. Um, I just didn't know how to draw the cows. I was struggling with this and uh, yeah, I was like, no, this is not good. And also um, there's just generally two or three big problems that I realized once I was at this um, this step. First is that, man, look at this, like we tried to dial in a good scrolling speed and it felt like fairly slow when we decided for one. But once you have so much detail in the background, like you are, the, the, the landscape just going away. It's just so much complexity in the background. It's just such an intricate, like little uh, advanced wars kind of background, right? Like it's, it would be really good for a strategy game. But for a shmup where you're just blowing stuff up and all this complexity in this background is just like a little bit too much. It's too much complexity here. Like this is just like, um, it feels like it's scrolling too fast. You can't want to stop and, 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 and enjoy all the details. Um, it, now it feels like it's scrolling too, too, too fast or as if there's just too much stuff happening in the background. This is generally a problem with shmups and with any kind of game, like the way you perceive things, the way your eyes perceive things, your brain understands the world, it separates what, you know, <laughs> what the eyes see, like there's a scanner <laughs> going, <laughs> analyzing the image, and it kind of separates foreground and background. That's, that's kind of, there's like a process in your head that kind of like does something like this where you separate foreground and background. Yeah, things in the background are, you know, things are muted, things are, that, and it's just like the world, you know. And then things that are in the foreground are things that are active, moving, and, and these are things that, you know, animals, you know, something that, that evolutionarily makes sense for you to pop out to you and, and be like, oh, okay, I have to pay attention to this. And so you have this problem with games as well where uh, you want players to recognize certain things as the background and certain things as the foreground. Um, if something is noisy, if there's a lot of detail, it gets sometimes difficult to make players think of this as the background. They kind of like, it starts like competing against the foreground. And, and it might be difficult for players to parse the screen, to kind of like understand what is going on. And this is definitely the case here. It's just so much happening in the background. There's like little waterfalls, you kind of like start paying attention to the background. And I don't want people to pay attention that much to the background. There's just so much visual noise happening here, so much complexity. I kind of want to tone it down a little bit. That was my that was my thinking. I was happy with the com with the compactness of it. That's good. Um, something I also noticed is that the scale is all wrong. Like it makes sense that you know landscape that landscape that you fly above is kind of like smaller because it's in distance. But if you think about it, like this, those little houses, right? Eventually, I want to have ground enemies that I shoot at, and we've we already kind of established that as small as the smallest possible enemy that we're going to have is going to be sixteen times sixteen. So it's kind of like as big as my ship. So if you have like the street there, like the road, the bridge, and so forth. If you put a 16 times 16 tank on there, it will look like gigantic. It doesn't make sense that that tanks would be so big and it doesn't make sense that this roads would be so small. I mean, you could maybe explain it away like, oh, it's aliens, so they come in giant ships, whatever. But then your own ship is also gigantic. Like, it just like feels like, you're, like the landscape is too small, too small, too tiny. 
and also like the cow is as big as a house <laughs> like it's just like the scale is all wrong it just looks all all broken up i think i need a tile set that's more zoomed in generally like completely zoomed in and the final thing and that kind of like made me made me um question like my general approach here is what am i even showing like what am i showing in the background this is supposed to be a game about aliens abducting cows right that's kind of like the the story here i want to show some kind of landscape in the background where cows exist and aliens are abducting them and so spending so much time so many time so many resources on tiles that show you a coastal outline kind of doesn't match what we're trying to show we're trying to show meadows right we try to show places where cows exist instead we have cliffs cliffs is not where cows live sometimes you might have a cow pasture next to a cliff but it's kind of like an exception and instead we have like this roller coaster cliff design where it's just like mountains on top of mountains on top of mountains and lots of mountains but not a lot of place for cows to exist so like creating this elaborate system that recreates like this uh, mock-up that we had in the in the mock-up <laughs> the background in the mock-up um, recreating that mock-up it doesn't quite make sense because that's not necessarily the kind of environment that we need to have so general takeaways i need to zoom in i need a more zoomed in view not not these tiny little things something things that are bigger so the scale is wrong i need something that's less noisy more repetitive um less details that you get lost in I, I want less a diorama and more of a background right and uh, i want to generally show less cliffs less complex cliff patterns and more just like places where cows can live but i still kind of want to have something that is close to the look and feel of that original mock-up so now we want to kind of capture the feel of something without necessarily exactly replicating it and by the way this was also kind of like the time where i got feedback from the people of skies of chaos who told me that i am not allowed to use their uh, concept art as kind of like an inspiration they kind of like felt uncomfortable with that and i'm respecting that absolutely if you ask and they say no then you need to respect that so but it was kind of like already kind of convenient like okay I, they said no but also i kind of like went ahead with those experiments and realized that oh I, I actually don't want that in the first place anyway so that's kind of nice and also we kind of have to find out a way to to do the cows better now around the time i came across this game which is by mikesta also known as sean Mangit, and man i was like wow i'm working in this tutorial and here we go here's another awesome, here's a great schmub like i'm just, <laughs> somebody already made the game i'm trying to make it has kind of like the similar uh, uh, scale that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like a big 16 16 times 16 uh sprite for the ship um lots of bullets and, and really cool backgrounds so this is an awesome game guys this is this is a cool cool little schmub and, and something that that really um that I was really impressed by are those trees that you see, especially in this, this level. You see how those, those trees are kind of like, they're big, the, the scale is right, they, the scale feels right, and then those big streets and between the roads between the trees are also really good. The scale is uh, right, but also they do something that's interesting that I, I really appreciated, which is the trees, let me stop it real quick. The trees are not in, um, aligned in cardinal directions yes they are next to each other horizontally but vertically they kind of like diagonally or always offset a little bit and that's kind of like the zelda trees effect if you um uh, legend of zelda link to the past also has these kinds of trees where the trees are always a little bit offset and it creates like this very dense forest effect that feels a little bit more, more natural because they're not you know cardinal directions but you know like offset a little bit it, it's still it's still regular but it feels a little bit more organic and i like those trees i like this kind of use of sprite sheet and that was my inspiration to kind of like start a new attempt at doing the sprite sheet thank you so much sean right so here we are getting already into like we're honing in right so I'm just like completely removing the cliffs. No longer any cliffs, not interested in cliffs right now. Maybe we're gonna bring some water later on. But for now, I'm focusing on the core experience. I want to have cows, I want to have trees, and I want to like try the trees that we saw in, in Twin Strike. Um, this 
is basically all we need. Uh, like those sides are all that is necessary to draw the trees. And you can see how it's really nice, really nice and efficient because the trees are kind of like interlinked. Part of a, of a tree is already drawn by next tree. So like this is like the tree trunk, but it also contains, you know, the sides of the trees uh, below it. So um, it, it took a little bit to, to figure this out. Like you have to sit down and, and do some experiments, some, some maths and draw some circles and, and see how they, co they combine and so forth. This takes a little bit. Um, this is, this is not as, as a very simple, uh, straightforward to use tile set, uh, but if you get it working, you can see you can get these beautiful dense forests that, that have really nice um, organic looking edges because you don't have like straights anymore or you can at least break up the straights. That's really cool. I also added uh, just a few tiles uh, to create like roads and I'm just not doing any kind of curved roads like I had previously. I have like these kinds of like roads that went, went around the mountains, whatever. Just doing a straight road like in Twin Strike. Um, that was good enough. The scale is good. I can put a tank on there and it will look fine. And then I focus on the cows. So yeah, I recreated the cows here. I, um, I made cows that look more like cows look from an aerial view. And then also added even uh, some additional tiles. Again, very, very simple tiles that um, that uh, allows me to create co you know those, those fences because I think fences are a very important power part of co cow pastures. Uh, something that I do here is I have some additional tiles that allow me that allow me a fence to um, to terminate at a tree, so I can combine the fences with it with a tree, so I don't have to always create squares from the fences. And then also I have additional tiles. This is like the, those tiles in here where I can put a tree that is kind of covering part uh, up part of the street to make the individual elements of the sprite um, sheet um, more integrated. And this looks a lot more promising to me because I'm using kind of like half of my budget, but I can already build all sorts of interesting landscapes that are in line with the way I actually want to show. And there are, the scale is bigger, the sprites look bigger. That's really, really cool. I have roads, I have cows, I have pastures. That's where I'm, I want to be going. And yeah, this looks nice. This looks nice. It, it is a bit noisy, I have to say. Like the, the, the trees are very dark and this is where the uh, blue outline of the ship really becomes important. It really helps the ship pop against, against, the, against the trees because there's, the trees are a bit noisy, visually noisy. There's just like some dithering happening there. Yeah, you kind of want to have the blue outline. And I wanted to show you this again because like this is, was like a big part that this the project actually kind of hinged on this a little bit. I had the cows in a previous iteration and they made bad. And so I sat down and did a new iteration of the cows. I actually looked up some Google images on, of how cows look from an aerial perspective. And I realized, oh, it's just like a sausage with tiny little <laughs> legs underneath. And usually the head is down. Uh, here in the previous version, we had a head going up. And you know, I, in the previous version, I focused on things that, you know, when you think about a cow, oh, it has like a pink snoot maybe, and it's, you know, it has ears and so forth. Um, so that's what I drew, but actually that's not what you see in real life. When you see a cow in real life from aerial perspective, you just see like a little, little rice corn, and then that, that is suspended on some tiny little legs and then a, a head that goes down. Um, so like looking at the inspiration at the reference material really helped me nailing down the, the look of the cow. But also one of the reasons why I'm showing this and generally when I'm showing you like the intermediate steps that I abandoned that, that didn't work out is that this is the process. This is what you have to do when you create any kind of uh, map design, sprite design, any kind of artwork is you do things and they do not work out and then you don't stop. You just like do it again. And, and learn from that and carry over learnings into the next step. You find out what you have to do in order to make it better. And, you know, and the, failure, the failure is kind of like an important step for you to realize what you actually need to do. You kind of have to get your foot, you have to jump into the water, drown, <laughs> and then realize, oh, okay, that's what I have to do. <laughs> and I think that's something that can very quickly happen. It's like you just try something, it doesn't work out and you go like, I don't know how to do these things. And it's like, I have been there myself and it's not like a character weakness. And we all do this. Like if you don't have faith in your skills and you fail at something, you are, you just like, you confirm your, your suspicions that you're not good at something. And then you use this as an excuse to stop doing things. 
if you have more faith in your skills, it's easier for you to, you know, hit the uh, take the hit to the gut. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> back back in the chair, and and try it again. Um, and so I think uh, something that helps you overcoming problems with drawing is just like here's a promise. I make you a promise. If you don't stop, if you just continue, do another iteration, try to do something like think about what you have to do in order to make it better, then I guarantee you that it will get better. Uh, just don't stop when you create something that you don't like and you feel like you failed. Just don't stop there. Just continue doing it. And eventually you'll get there. Don't stop believing. That's right. So this was the proof of concept for me. This was, okay, this approach works. This is the right scale. We concentrated on the right things that we actually want to show in the game. We don't have a plan for what our level is going to be, but we knew that probably it will involve trees and cows and pastures. And we can draw these things and we still have a, almost half of the, of the, of the tile set to go. So now the next question is kind of like, all right, how do we continue? Like, what else do we need in our levels? What are actually going to be our levels? And again, this is like this thing I was talking about um, in the previous episode. The problems are interlinked. This is like a chicken and egg solution. We kind of like had some broad ideas going into it. So we knew that we wanted to draw cows. So we drew some cows. Um, but now we are running on fumes. We ran out of, we, we completed our initial assumptions. And so now we really have to think about what is our level going to be? What do we have to actually show on the screen besides like broadly speaking cows and pastures and so forth? What is going to be our level? If you watch my GGLS3 video, I'm going to post a link here if you want to also down at doobly doo. Um, I, I make an argument there, which I think I kind of like I realized working on the shmap, which is the background to some extent is highly involved in the storytelling of it. Like the background shows a story. It's kind of like a story. It's kind of like a comic strip that you see scrolling and underneath the mayhem, right? And um, also that storytelling, like it isn't necessarily, you know, like, you know, the hero's journey or like dialogues or anything like this. We can look at storytelling, think about storytelling as something that is very basic, very fundamental, very, very pure. And that is just things changing. Things changing is a type of storytelling. First, I am in this place. Now I'm in this place. So the story is I went from place A to place B. That's kind of like the story that I'm, I'm telling there. And of course, we can then fine tune things and make sure that place A and B have an interesting relation. But generally, broadly speaking, we first want to make sure that the places, that we go through different places. That we change things, we change the background. Like you're not just seeing the same pastures, like different types of pastures, but it's all just pastures. But now you see a pasture, now you see a wood, now you see a lake, now you see a cliff. You know, just seeing different things. Once you have that nailed down, the next question is how can we make those changes actually mean something? Make Because it's like, okay, cliff, oh, fine, I saw a pasture, now I see a cliff. But what if the cliff is interesting in a way that it maybe subverts expectations, it ties into something that you thought about, you know, it should maybe actually mean something, not just like be different, that's already good, but also what if it's actually, in addition to that, also means something. So then now we have to talk about meaning. <laughs> so now we just want to make some tiles, but now we have to t t think about meaning. What does our game even mean? What is our game about, you know? Like these very broad topics. Yeah, wh what's, what's the meaning of this? Like, okay, first of all, it was a bit of a joke here, right? Like we are, we're, it's a bit of a cheeky, fun, we're fighting against aliens and the aliens are abducting cows. It's kind of like a bit of a silly kind of uh, setting here. But one of the things I talked about in the first episode is that I'm not really happy with the politics of it on the, on the face of it. Uh, I don't like the military airplane. I don't like that we're controlling a military airplane and we're showing, you know, fun things happening while you're in a cockpit over a military airplane where Ooh, I'm blowing stuff up, I'm having fun, you know. I don't, that just doesn't ring true, that doesn't ring. That's not something I am comfortable with. Now, you might be thinking about this differently and that's fine. I'm not trying to convince you that my way is the correct way. I'm just like, I'm struggling with this. This is something I'm struggling with and I'm trying to um, get around this, kind of like find a solution for this. And this might be kind of like the key to solve our problem. Yeah, we're kind of trying to turn our problems into advantages, right? 
So uh, this is what's the initial pitch. And actually, something I did, I haven't, haven't talked about in the first video, is um, when I shown around our mo um, the mockers, I always also wrote down a little bit of text, kind of like to give people the context of what they're looking at. Um, so I wrote like this little, without much thought, I just wrote this little uh, script. Aliens invaded the Earth, and they want only one thing, our cows. Defeat the aliens and rescue our cows, so we can then kill and eat them ourselves. Wait, are we the baddies? <laughs> so I just wrote this down. I, I don't know. This is something that I'm, I'm kind of like um, thinking about a lot, which is, um, I'm not a vegetarian myself, but like the industrial, there's a certain grotesqueness of the way we make meat in general. I think there's it's just like just it's just this ridiculously villainous thing that we humans do to animals, like to create like those factories where animals are being slaughtered on the <laughs> like with a machine like just so insane like whenever you want to create like a horror scenario you put people in that position like aliens abduct people and put them in factories and turn them into meat that seems like a horror scenario right so it's kind of like weird that we just like accept that this is like how things are in our society it's kind of like a grotesque thing and i want to maybe like I would feel better if I can call attention to that. I, that feels like more in line with my, yeah, my, my politics, I would say. So this could be a kind of like a guiding principle, kind of like the thing that we want to maybe convey, express in this game. We kind of want to do like a, are we the baddies kind of joke <clears throat> where you play and you think like, oh, it's like this scenario <clears throat> where cows are abducted. And then we twist this around a little bit and then you throw in some wrenches into the scenario where it's like, wait a minute, what are we actually doing here? And then in the end, you kind of like realize that you are actually maybe the bad guy that you shouldn't have rescued the cows. Um, kind of like doing a rug pull. Right, so you remember maybe um, I, w I asked you to make a plan uh, in, a, in a doggy zone last time around. I asked you to make a plan and now we can like make that plan ourselves now that we know where we're going, what we're trying to do. And you know, if you made a plan and after watching this, you reconsider your plan, that's fine. You know, just writing some text is very cheap. So it's fine if it's a bad plan. Remaking this plan is probably the cheapest thing that you can remake in, in your game. So we said that there's going to be a boss one. We said that there's going to be boss two. And there's going to be boss three. Uh, well, I counted one, two, three, but basically these are going to be mid-bosses and this is then going to be the final boss. And when you defeat the final boss, you win the game. What happens before the first boss? Well, we kind of have to establish, establish the status quo. Which means we have to tell that there's aliens, there is aliens, um, uh, they kidnap cows, uh, kidnap, uh, abduct, abduct, kidnap, <laughs> abduct cows. And that, um, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be uh, the aliens are e evil. They are destroying things, right? Uh, the idea is that we are now, like at this stage, we are on the side of of the good guys. We are the good guys, right? <laughs> and then we're gonna show one a, a boss, um, and then something I want to do afterwards is I want to throw in a wrench. So now there's questions: what kind of environment can we show that kind of like makes everything a bit weird and and uncomfortable? And I think a good way is to show um, the second level or the second part of the level after the first, first boss is gonna be industrial farming. Uh, um, cow farm, meat production farm, aliens are uh, uh, rescuing cows. So this is our twist, right? This is the twist that we were talking about. Aliens, at, at first it looks like they're bad guys uh, rescuing the cows, then there's a boss, and then we show a different level that shows we're going to a different place, as I said. And that place is meaningful because now that there's a relationship between level one, where the aliens are abducting cows and they're, it looks like they're bad, to level two, where the aliens are abducting cows, and now it doesn't look as much as if they're bad anymore. And there's gonna be a boss, I'm kind of like skipping over the bosses. Now there's gonna be something here and um, I've been thinking about this and it's like, there's, we probably only have space for those two levels 
And I'm also thinking about timing and so forth. So I was thinking about this third level to be entirely uh, uh, over water uh, because maybe the aliens are uh, flying away. They are, you are chasing the aliens. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of filler kind of thing, uh, because I want to set up for the final twist reveal. The final twist reveal, and this is going to be a spoiler, so plug your ears if you don't want to hear the final spoiler. So in the final boss fight, in the final boss fight, you will fi fight some alien spaceship. And I want to have a TLB kind of thing where the alien spaceship explodes and there's a final phase of that um, alien spaceship that you have to fight, which is like kind of the core of this in a spaceship, mother spaceship, which is going to be the pilot of that uh, alien mother spaceship. And that pilot is going to be a cow. <laughs> the aliens are cows. <laughs> so um, yeah, the idea is that maybe the cows, uh, the aliens are uh, an advanced cow species from outer space. And they came to Earth to rescue the brethren, their primitive brethren. And, um, and the, the final boss is going to be like a cybernetically enhanced jetpack carrying cow, maybe something. This is my thinking. I haven't drawn it, it's just my imagination right now. But I think this would be a really fun reveal. Uh, a, a hilarious reveal because a cow in a jetpack is kind of amazing. Um, but also one that kind of like, uh, again, elevates the stakes in this in this joke here, right? Like first we had like aliens uh, abducting cows, they're bad guys, but now it's like maybe we are the bad guys. And then at the end it's like, wow, this is kind of like this, this brings us to a point, right? Like the aliens are actually cows. <clears throat> so yeah, this is kind of like the overall outline of what we're trying to do. Now we can just take the individual levels and think about how we're gonna uh, show that, you know, there's aliens and there are the cows and so forth. We can now just break down the individual sections into smaller sections. Because all of the things that I talked about uh, uh, that applies to the overall story outline of the game also applies to the individual subsections, right? You can just go smaller and smaller. So now we're thinking about just one level. How do we do tell an arc a story in that first section? And here's something, I'm gonna copy this out because I just like, I just had this idea. So here's something, level one outline. Here's an outline, this is actually something I actually wrote uh, when I was planning things. So I want us to start over water. I want us, because like a lot of shmups actually start over water, it's kind of like a, like a cliche. I, just, I want to have like this cliche kind of start. Then I want us to um, arrive at a coast. Um, and then I want to show that the aliens have landed. So maybe there's going to be a crash site of an alien spaceship. And then you will see that aliens are coming out of the crash site. Or maybe the crash site um, UFO will rise and then you fight it and so something like this. And then I want to show a bunch of uh, forest. And then I want to have the reveal that the aliens are abducting the cows in the mid-boss, uh, in the first mid-boss fight. I don't know why I said it two here, it should be one. So basically at, uh, the boss one is where you see the aliens interact with the cows, right? And then we're gonna continue somehow later on. I then tried to design this. I kind of like did kind of like some rough uh, outlines and, 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 and designed some levels for this. And I quickly realized that this is actually bad. This doesn't quite work. And the reason why it doesn't quite work <clears throat> is that you spend a lot of time without the cows. You spend a lot of time with the aliens and with some forest, I guess. Like th that's just like nothing. Like this doesn't do anything for you. So you don't see any cows at all. And you only see the cows uh, by the time you reach the first boss. That doesn't quite work. Like it doesn't... It, the cows come in way too long, too, too late in the story. You want to have the cows as quickly as possible because they're so core to the story, the story that we're trying to tell. We want to show cows and the aliens already earlier throughout the level, not at the first mid-boss. But the eventual elements are cool. I like that the, we, the idea that we start over water and then go over coast. That's something you're going to keep in mind. I like that there's maybe forests in there. So the individual landscapes, we can still draw something from this, but we have to maybe rearrange things a little bit. Another thing I was also thinking about, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna copy this over, is generally the, the timing. Um, so you saw me analyze different games, different, different levels in different games. For example, you saw this graph where I basically took uh, different levels and kind of like try to separate them in different sections. And you see that quite kind of regular sections uh, where you have like intros and, and there's like different 
places that they show you in the background. And that's something I was talking about. You want to show different places. You want to feel like you're going to different places throughout the level. And that's what we have here. Here we will see that the mid bosses take 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, you kind of like see different sections that place like sections that feel different from each other, uh, separate from each other. And so looking at, especially at stage six from GGLS3, um, I kind of like create, created a plan for how I want um, generally the timing of my, my game to look like. I want to have, um, I want to spend um, 130 seconds until the beginning of the first boss fight. This is kind of like this part here. This part here before the, um, the first boss fight is going to be 130 seconds long. This is what we had in GGLS3 and let's just like copying it over and see if it works. And then uh, after the first boss fight, this part here, industrial cow farm and so forth, this is going to be 100 seconds. So um, I know that around one screen, like at my current speed, one screen of scrolling is around 10 seconds. It's 10.8, I think. Um, so I know that I'm going to have 13 screens. Um, I, I need to design 13 screens, so uh, 26 sections, segments um, of level of landscape until until the first mid boss and then later on I, i'm going to have to design uh, 10 screens so 20 um, segments for the factory part of it and this already gives me kind of like enough to work with right this gives me kind of enough to work with i also have like this breakdown that i did afterwards which kind of like a timed out thing so this would mean that we have kind of like, let's say there's like a 25 seconds intro over water. Water is kind of nice because you can just repeat the same segment over and over again. You can just stretch it out a little bit. It's kind of like a good filler. That's why that's why I liked having water. Um, also like it's, it's uh, you can focus more on the gameplay, on the enemies. You don't have to, uh, so much distraction in the background. So that's good. And then 107 seconds woodland or pastures or whatever. Um, then 35 seconds mid, uh, mid boss over woods. Then uh, factory, I don't know why, uh, oh yeah, 19 modules, so nine, 19 segments of, of factory, so I kind of like rounded it down a little bit. Uh, then there's going to be a mid-boss over a factory, uh, and then air or, or like water, right? Like, and there's going to be some filler now, and 90 seconds of filler, I'm not sure, maybe this is a little bit too... The idea here was that this last section is really intense, like the gameplay is going to be really hardcore, because this is kind of like, you know, the final level of the game, right? and then a hardcore boss over water. So if in total, if you count this up, we would arrive at 456 seconds at seven minutes, 36. That's pretty long. That's a little bit longer than we originally planned. I'm not sure how, why I exactly arrived at this. I think uh, I started out with six minutes and then I forgot that the mid bosses will actually take some time. <laughs> I think that was my initial thinking. But yeah, like this is just like what I decided and it might be wrong, and if it's wrong, we're gonna go back and, and make a different plan. But for now, let's use this as our guiding principle. And this is how we arrived at the final tile map. So this is the final tile map. As you can see, it's really nice how we spent so much time on coastal stuff in the first iterations. But now it's like, like just like these three tiles is, is water. We have two different types of waves. And then this part is just for the coast. Because the way I did the coast here is just like a single coast, just like a line. There is no like weird coastal lines. It's just like a cliff and that's it. It's just a straight cliff. That means that we can get away, uh, away with a relatively low amount of, uh, of tiles. Uh, and it kind of looks, looks nice, looks nice in 3D. So I kind of like wanted that. We had to add a lot of extra tiles here to break it up because just like a straight line was a bit boring. So to make it feel more natural, I had to get like boulders and stuff in the water, but, but it's fine. Uh, then I have a bit of a tile set to create a farm because I just said like, I'm gonna so show some pastures. So I would love to show a barn, right? Um, but I set it up in a way that I can later on use this also to show the factory. And then uh, going up here, we see some cars. Like I want to maybe show a pickup truck because it's also part of, of the idea of a truck. I have a pickup truck also on the street. Uh, and then I have trucks, just uh, transport trucks. This is a little bit of a fence. We might not need it, but I'm going to show you. It's like a more uh, special case thing. And then I have like here dirt roads kind of basically and then like dirt environments. And then this is just a luxurious hole that we're gonna show later on when we show the aliens 
uh, abducting cows from the from the factories. So here are the different segments. You can always see those blue things. These things. These are just like visual indicators for me where a, a segment begins, another segment ends. Uh, eventually, I will obviously remove them and fill them in with meaningful tiles. But for now, it's just like uh, for me to see if something is misaligned. Um, here is a tile. I'm going to show it the level later on. But here's a tile uh, or like a segment that shows a crashed UFO. So the idea is that this is going to be the first boss fight. So uh, you remember we had this idea that we're going to come up with a cr uh, up on a crash UFO and that's where the aliens will come out. Um, I moved it around so now you find the crashed UFO but it's going to be the first boss fight. So you come up on this crashed UFO and then the UFO uh, lifts up again and then you fight it. So that was that was the idea here. And then here's the factory farming, again, using the uh, fences that we had from, uh, from the uh, beginning of the tile set um, to create like, you know, focus more on cows being in fences. Again, I looked some, uh, at some aerial shots of uh, industrial cow farming and I'm using the barn tile set here to create like those very long barns because again, that's how, how it looks, how factory farming looks. And I'm actually, uh, factory farming is kind of nice because it's all just like this long barn, so I can just repeat this. So it's kind of like convenient as well. I can repeat the barns. Uh, here's a big parking lot that I was able to create with the tile sets that we had. Here's some cows and some smaller blocks. And here's like the big meat factory. You can see um, uh, trucks being parked and like openings. So the trucks are being lo loaded and loaded, some chimneys. Uh, a little bit more menacing, some additional roof uh, installations, and here's the luxurious holes. I kind of like made uh, set up the the tile set here uh, in a way that I can create a hole of, of bigger size as well. And so the um, the second boss fight will be here. The boss will be hovering ab uh, uh, above the hole and maybe sucking up some cows from the inside. And then you have to fight the boss. I did a fun thing here. I will always want to make sure that if I invest, I, uh, if I use a tile, like use tiles for something, that I get to use it. At at two points at least, so uh, you know I can get more use out of out of each individual tile. So for example, uh, this is a barn, but it can also be a factory. And uh, with this cliff, I had the cliff here, so I added some additional tiles to to allow me to have a cliff uh, between a forest and uh, and here. So the, there's a cliff separating, um, you know, the first level and the second level here that adds just a little bit of an elevation, a little bit of visual, visual break. Right, so let us look at the level. Now I have a level prepared, but um, I'm, I'm actually gonna show you, uh, like I create like a... Right, so here is our level. You can see it starts over water, lots of water. Then we have the cliff, a bit of woods, maybe there's a street, maybe we're gonna encounter first UFOs on the street. Then we open up in this pasture, and I also want to sh always show, you know, uh, like a nice little idyllic farm. It's supposed to look nice. And so when the aliens come in and, and abduct cows, it's supposed to feel like, oh no, the aliens are bad. They kind of like destroying this idyllic picture, you know? Um, yeah, and so I'm here you see a bit of a repetition. It's, I don't like that too much, but uh, I don't think you will notice when you play and you fight a lot of aliens in the background. It's fine. Um, I want to also always make sure that maybe you use the same segments, but maybe in different contexts. Here's a segment of the of the barn, but there's a street next to it. So it looks a little bit different from this barn, which doesn't have a street. So, it, you know, you get a little bit more use out of the segments. And then we get into a more wooded area. And so here's more of a pasture place, you know, you're focusing on the cows and then again, more focusing on the woods because this is more of a, the X-Files place, you know, the crashed UFO in, in thick woods in the middle of nowhere, you know, the X-Files idea where there's a downed UFO there and there's maybe some cars parked. Initially I had a special sprites for police cars, but I thought it wasn't necessary yet at all. I like it's just like, I don't know, it was just a bit too much. But I have like these specialized fences that feel a bit more official. So it looks like people already arrived at the crash site and are trying to figure it out. And then, then the UFO will rise from the crash site and that will be the first boss fight. So this is generally like the first level, the, the idea for the first level, okay? And this is the second level. Um, we have some wood tiles here because again, this is gonna be the part where the woods are uh, repeated over and over again. Um, that's using this kind of like boss repetition thing that we did last episode. We have a cliff here that separates first level and second level basically. 
and then we immediately hit the player with you know a bunch of cows in very, very small enclosures like very very dense and then here we bring out the the dirt roads so it looks doesn't look as green anymore so it's used a bit it looks a bit more used up and then the big factories you know the big big barns like the industrial barns and then more and more just repeat, repeating it so it feels more like barracks you know like um, because that's what they look like that's what the industrial farms look like uh, then a bit of a uh, bringing back the cows because there's not too many cows in here so i want to just so remind you that we have cows here uh, parking space that's good this looks more you know infrastructure focused so now we're getting into like the really factory kind of part and now we get the factory big factory built out of the same tile set as the barn uh, lots of trucks down here there is a cool thing about the, the trucks like um, i'm using the same tile for the front of the pickup truck and the front of the actual truck, so the truck side view. So that's kind of nice. Um, I can skip one tile. Uh, and then, yeah, we have the big big factory with a huge hole, and this is where we're going to find the second boss hovering about around the, the big hole. And then we're going to fight the big uh, the second boss, and the second boss fight will be um, here. Um, we're going to repeat these tiles, so it's going to be above a C, of cows so maybe they, i thought maybe the second boss will maybe at some point take cows from the pastures <laughs> as it's scrolling past it might be fun maybe it's picking up cows and charging energy like this i don't know i think narratively it would be nice to show the boss fight around the cows because the, you know the, the story is about the cows and then once the boss fight is finished we're gonna go off the cliff and then into uh, the chase sequence where maybe the, we're gonna even increase the scrolling speed i don't know if that we can make this work but uh, we're going to show uh, a chase. You're chasing after the, the spaceship that maybe got away with the cows and you're trying to get back the cows that were abducted uh, in the final boss fight. I also wanted to show the process of how I arrived at this because no, we just saw the final result, but we, I didn't actually talk about how I arrived at the final result. Uh, I used physical cards. So I made like this little piece of paper. I was able to scribble down like some idea of what a segment could look like and I could like stack them and, and, and see generally what, what the level progression would be like. And because I counted out previously, you know, I need to have, uh, what did I say, 130 seconds before the first boss fight. I counted this out. I see how many segments I still need to fill until to get to, get to the boss fight. And also the individual segments were numbered. You can see the individual segments were numbered. I put numbers in the corner and whenever I'm repeating in a segment, I, I put an R here and that means that it's repeating. Uh, so um, I, I, I could, you know, budget the segments. I could see like, okay, I need to stretch this out by two more segments. I need to repeat two segments because I cannot create a new segment. So I'm going to repeat this segment here, this segment here and so forth. This allowed me to play around with the level structure very quickly without having to sit down and, and design the segments and the delete segments if I change something, you know. So this was a really, really uh, valuable tool to plan out. So this is the first level, this is the crash site. And these are like different shapes that I combined to create interesting landscapes. All right, so let's bring in the levels because we, uh, this is scroll two. This is now our actual code, you see, and this is our, <laughs> our prototype thing. Um, so we brought over the tile sets. We have um, um, brought over the actual map, the individual segments that we have, right? You have the segments in here, but we don't have the level. Uh, so let's bring over the level. I have it here. I have, a, I have a thing that we can copy and paste. And you probably will have to look into the source code that's going to be down in doobly-doo to, to get the level in here. But you can, obviously, you're free to design your own level as well. Uh, I'm going to paste it in. I'm not sure if it will work because I'm... I was working with a slightly different system back then, so I had to do like a conversion. I hopefully this conversion works. But yeah, it seems like it's working. This is gonna be the level. This is gonna be our game here. This will go for six minutes. So I'm gonna leave this in the background here as we discuss the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. All right, so with the doggy zone, obviously there's gonna be, you have to go through this process yourself. Like if you want to create your own shmup based on your own mock-up, you will have to go through this similar process yourself. And I hopefully this, looking at my process, understanding the challenges that I went through, the kind of like decisions that I made will help you uh, get through the process yourself. 
I, it really depends on the kind of mock-up that you do. I just wanted to r uh, remind you, repeat this mantra that I uh, told you about before, and that is you expect that things will go wrong. You, sh you shouldn't be surprised if you arrive at something that doesn't quite work. It's fine. Just like take the lessons from it and move on to a new iterations. Try it again. Also ask yourself like, what was the problem? What are we actually trying to achieve? Um, what are the planning that I need to do to answer the questions that are stopping me from progressing further? For example, I don't know what kind of tile sets to add next. I've kind of like added some tile sets. I don't know what else to add. Well, you need to plan out what your level is supposed to be in order to be able to decide which tile sets you still need to display to convey the level that you want to show. And also maybe thinking about working in a different medium that is maybe more conducive to doing creative decisions. So for example, switching to over to paper prototypes, sketching out on paper might be easier than working on a computer. Sometimes computers are a bit you know, rigid. Yeah, that is going to be the that is going to be the task for the next time. You have to do the tile sets. Obviously, you are also free to just use my tile set. You are free to use my level structure. It's fine. It's part of the tutorial series. But I would encourage you to try your own approaches. I would love to see different types of shmups being created. And I would love to you to post them in the um, Discord. I would love to you to share stuff in the Discord. As you saw with um, you know, Twin Strike, sometimes being seeing somebody else do something is kind of like the thing that you need to see in order to have a breakthrough in your own process. That's why I'm always encouraging people to post stuff in a Discord. We need to see each other's work to get better at our own work. Right, so this is the part where I move over and uh, say a big, big, big thank you to all the people supporting this show on coffee. So if you don't know this, there's a website called coffee.com slash lazy devs. There's some really excellent people who are making this show possible by donating some money to keep this show afloat. But not only are you supporting the show, but there's also a little bit of a perk. There's a little reward. You get to see, if you're supporting me on Coffee, you get to see new episodes earlier. So yeah, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs if you want to support this show as well. Right, so this was this was a big episode. I was dreading going through this episode because there's just a lot to go through and it's just like, yikes. But we have a background here. And so the next step is going to be the next step is going to be go through our, our master plan, which means that we have to combine all those prototypes together and actually start writing the actual game. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.